If you thought Holland was a great playing tall nation before, well they're absolutely broken now. We're getting 32 ducats profit from 11 provinces in 1484 and I haven't even finished doing my playing toll ideas so what's happening here and for 10,000 likes we'll do the second part of this where we show how to best play toll in the mid game and turn Holland into a massive colonial empire there have been some major changes in the last patch that affects playing toll nations considerably and one nation that is affected in particular is obviously Holland and later on the Netherlands once we form it it actually pays off a lot more staying small now and I'll show you as we go along in the game why first thing obviously we'll be doing is we're gonna be summoning the diet and we'll be choosing whichever agenda best suits us prestige seems pretty easy for us right now let's also get the plus one mana privileges for all three of the estates and before we get the minus 25 advisor cost we just stab up once we always do the one stab up before we get the advisor cost reduction for a very very important reason and and that is obviously because once you have one stability and you do not have any devastation in your provinces, you start randomly getting every month plus one progress for prosperity. This is affected by your monarch's skills and in my case, he's a 555 so I'm getting 75% chance of getting this increase per month. The maximum you can have it at is 90% increase per month if he is a 666 of course. But that's a really rare occasion, isn't it? We also can give out the supremacy over the crown and the patronage of the arts to get some extra prestige and that's pretty much it seize the crownlands and the great part is even though it's five percent with the recent patch you always get 0.20 autonomy monthly so you don't actually need to develop any of your provinces once we also set up our fleet in the uh, english channel and we will be building a few more ships we want to aim for about 30 light ships in the early phase of the game we obviously also start as a junior partner of burgundy some of you think that being a junior partner is not so bad because the starting leader of 555 but it is bad and here's why because you want to use the starting period to wait for your aggressive expansion to go down what do i mean by this well we're going to get our independence war very early on and then we're going to take a few provinces from brabant and then after we take these provinces we're going to wait for like 10 15 years do nothing just wait for the aggressive expansion to go down if we were to wait for 10 15 years before we go independent then we're wasting our time that's 10 15 years in which we can literally go from 50 to zero aggressive expansion and have double the country size usually countries that have rivaled the uh, burgundians will always accept to support your independence so in my case that is apparently the austrians and the english so wait for one day and then we can go english as well noise now there's a trick with this and namely that is if you want to have the independence on the 11th of december you need to do it then because otherwise the english will go to war with the french there's actually a lot of getting your independence if you don't want to go through the war or you don't have the dlc to go through the war you can also wait until the events with the burgundian inheritance triggers and then you can get your independence then there's a little bit of rng involved in that case though so keep that in mind regardless of the case let's uh, go ahead and hire the free company we need a little bit more money so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the one percent burger loans we're getting these loans because we're essentially paying no interest back 0 0.08 is literally the same like not having any loans this next step is extremely vital because it always has the same outcome i'm talking about the diplomatic feedback go to your country click on diplomatic feedback and then assign all of these provinces from brabant and from flanders as your vital interest provinces why are we doing this well 90 percent of cases in the independence war you're actually going to get your ass kicked by the burgundians until the austrians and the english arrive so until they arrive you're going to be hiding in the province of Amsterdam waiting for you guys to help you out and that means they likely will get to these provinces before you get to them and if you don't have them set as vital interest they're gonna try and take them especially the English they love to take these provinces or the French even sometimes getting a morale of armies advisor is really helpful as is getting a diplo reputation guy always prioritize mana over everything else in this game and guess what actually because we got the diplo rep guy we're really close to getting France as an ally in the war oh my god if i actually get the french to support my independence that's like almost instantly winning this screw it man let's wait for a couple more months and try and get the french in here as well obviously this is a little bit of a gamble because there's a chance that the french
French and the English are going to go to war, in which case I have to wait until they finish their war. <laughs> and they did go to war. Oh boy. Oh, what? Burgundy abandoned my PU? No, this is super bad. Oh shit, no, 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 no. I don't want this. Oh my god, and I have a 113. Oh, dude, seriously? Legit, this is probably the worst album right now. So, they abandoned the PU over me because I was supported by quite a couple of strong nations, and they didn't want to go to war with me. But this is bad, because now in order to get the provinces from Brabant, I have to fight Burgundy by myself, which is not possible. So, I'm gonna have to get strong before I get the provinces in Brabant. So that means I actually will have to start fighting nations around, here get my power base going and then after fight a big ass war against uh burgundy before they become a junior partner under a bigger nation which is very very likely to happen by the way and they hate me so i cannot get a royal marriage just yet with them maybe i can try and get the burgundian inheritance myself that could work but it is super rng let's see fingers crossed though get our new rivals in here gelre friesland utrecht are basically the best rivals you can have we're gonna get some claims on gelre and uh, on Friesland because Gelre here is allied to Liege and almost all the times Liege gets attacked Burgundy and when that happens they're not going to be joining in my war against uh, Gelre. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to expand infrastructure in the province of Den Haag. If you look at this what this does is it offers so many bonuses dev cost reduction, construction cost reduction, construction time, goods produced increased, everything is absolutely amazing. The only downside is the fact that you actually get a flat governing increase of 15 which is quite a little bit but because we are playing toll it doesn't affect us as much as it would otherwise because right now we only have 16 out of 200 governing capacity i really need to get rid of this dumbass leader that i have let's make him a general hopefully he's gonna die because he's so bad look at this 113 this is like the worst case scenario man if you want to see a holland video in which we go through the independence war check my other holland video you'll find it in the description all right guys we got our first claim on Friesland so that means we can attack them now we got our fleet in the coast of Holland so we have supremacy so we can go across the street and we're also gonna assign it an admiral just so we get a little bit of extra support in case we need to do a naval battle apparently Oldenburg does not have any other allies so I'm gonna cobelligerate them in that case all right we won the naval battle so let's go across the street now we're gonna get the debuff obviously for going across the street but with a little bit of luck we should be able to win this battle here oh right we start with the zero amazing great i love this game i actually uh, and a, it, it's followed by a one we did actually win it surprisingly actually won it consolidate our units of course and let's pray that uh oldenburg is not gonna come into groningen to help because that's gonna be really bad for us it, they didn't come luckily enough so that means we stack wipe the frisians on the bright side it did not take us too long to siege down frisland we're gonna kill off their fleet as well at the same time here since uh they were hiding in frisland with the fleet military access through uh, East Friesland so we can actually get to Oldenburg and we should have an easy time killing off their troops now. God, yeah. Let's chase them off to Hoya. That's uh, that's like that uh, song, right? Hoya, 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 ho. I don't know. I just, I like old songs, I guess. The treaty with Oldenburg is pretty straightforward. We're vassalizing them, which gives us eight aggressive expansion. So that's like literally nothing. We're canceling their rivals so we get some extra prestige and take all their money. We're getting the prestige because at the start of the game, especially in the HRE, prestige is super important so you can actually lower your aggressive expansion impact oh wow last justing tournament that's pretty good that's gonna come in very much handy thank you very much sir right now we're also gonna fully annex the nation of friesland daria go so essentially what i've done here is the same thing i would have done with brabant if i was to do the independence war i would have taken the northern provinces they had and then i would have waited for 10 years to wait for the aggressive expansion to go down now i'm doing the same thing but it's just frisian provinces rather than brabant provinces and by taking these lands by the way we also went up to 10% crown lands so in one year we can go up to 15% crown lands Hey, my schnapple do ho ho! Sorry, I, I just got really excited because, oh my god, this is amazing. Oh god, please survive, bro. This seems like a fairly fitting name right here. So we got the worst leader ever and the best heir ever. Hound von Holland von Brabant. <laughs> oh, schnapps, they actually have Van in Dutch and I put Von. He's clearly a German spy. He's We're ruled by the German dynasty here, man. The fake von Holland German dynasty. Now remember the expanded infrastructure option we're gonna do that in all three of our 
starting provinces. We need to get 15 development in Zeland before we do it here also. So we're going to actually encourage development and we're going to dev it up a little bit. Don't worry about wasting your mana points at the start. It's worth it because by devving this up and getting the expand infrastructure, it really boosts up your economy so much. But you can see the effects of the expand structure. Just from five provinces, we have 50 governing capacity. So obviously this only works whenever you're staying small as a nation such as Holland over here. It's also very important that you lower the autonomy in the provinces that you conquered so this way you get a better economy going for yourself and as you can see we have a lot of devastation in these provinces so once more encourage development and boost up the development every time you develop a province it lowers the devastation in that particular province. Whenever you have devastation in a province it lowers your prosperity so if you have prosperity to a hundred and then all of a sudden you got some devastation it's not good you want to lower that devastation before it kills off your prosperity now because we are in the chilling part of the session we're going to be attacking the nation of Munster with the humiliate rival cb why are we doing this you ask well it's because we lack mana points considerably because of our crappy starting 113 leader which i'm really pissed about by the way but yeah we're going with the humiliation cb because this way we can actually get 300 mana points from Munster after we won the war plus this way we're not getting any aggressive expansion so it's still technically chilling okay and these guys just made the mistake of actually getting away from Osnabrück the one province I could not actually get to arrivederci Munster terci halla balla halla malla hallo yeah dead yeah yeah really dead looks like Hesse also made the same mistake here of actually getting away from Hesse and uh, trying to siege down my lands big mistake boyos big mistake gonna catch you up Heschlin and you got no more army bye bye kill off the rest of Munster and then we can siege down Hesse whilst uh, we're also sieging down Munster's capital this is also why it's really good to have vassals at the start of the game like I'm getting an extra 3,000 units from Oldenburg my vassal so I'm not paying for these guys but they're still helping me out in the war plus by having a vassal I actually have an increased land force limit of 1.3 more so because the nation of Hesse is actually downstream from our main trade node the best option in this peace treaty is going to be to ask them to steer trade towards us of course also get all the money and the uh, war reps but steering trade means that there's going to force Hesse to use their merchant to transfer trade in the English channel node from the Rhenish node avec le Munster is done as well so that we can do the uh, final peace deal here which is show of strength that offers 100 of each mana points oh look at that guys we can get an alliance with the English which is not bad because I don't mind using the English against the Scots let's actually start curring a few favors with them curring favors always is of great use since you can use oh what Austria Burgundy attack Liege oh I should have remembered this man I forgot completely that they're gonna attack Liege and I mentioned it at the start of the video but hey whatever man you know what let's uh let's just go first off and make sure that we don't get our armies completely wiped out if we can weaken Burgundy a little bit now that would be the best outcome this is what it looks like right now it might not seem like it but we actually have more soldiers on our side because we have a lot of these small insignificant OPMs and smaller HRE nations which piling up together they make the Powerpuff Girls or they make a solid number of nations against the Burgundians. Wait a second only 21 aggressive expansion for these two provinces oh boy I really want to get the war score now I really really want to take those provinces in this war it might be doable if Austria does not peace out before me oh my god Gelre actually gave me the province of Antwerpen if Brunswick did they didn't they gave it to Liege oh well you know what I actually might be able to get these provinces man no kidding I might actually be able to I need to get some proper Burgundian provinces and the alliance members are so nice they're actually gonna get rid of the rebels for me which uh, I really appreciate guys I really truly do ah yes the famous sack of Bruges which gave me five professionalism I am aware of this yes if we win this battle we should be able to get the two provinces that I want from uh, Burgundy so uh, fingers crossed we win this we got some great dice rolls we started with the two followed by another five and two and a three but they got a zero so that's something that is something for sure we won the battle well hello there renaissance it looks like you have arrived in our capital that's amazing i'm gonna get this a little bit later after the war not just yet right now what the hell they're actually holding up against so many other units flanders what are your troops made out of man holy schnitzel let's go with salon and with uh, france comte oh Oh, boy, 
Look at this, boys. 7270. Can I get some money also? I'm a little bit greedy, I know. Now I cannot get any money. Alright, you know what? Screw it. I'm peacing out. My my part is done in the war. I've helped Austria enough. Let them deal with the rest of this. I've basically been avoiding the battles and just sieging down stuff. So Austria has really done the hard work. Still, still, I could have chosen not to join. So think about that, okay? Oh my dear lord, look at this, guys. We have eight provinces in 1456 in the Netherlands. The area with the highest AE count in the world. Now we can just chill, like properly chill for quite a few years. Wait for the AE to go down before we attack Utrecht and uh, Gelred. Take the rest of this stuff. Oh dear, everybody's gangbanging Burgundy now. Even France declared war on the Burgundians. I feel bad for them. I feel like I've started a chain reaction there. Regardless, uh, I'm gonna attack East Frisia because they got something I want. I'm not cobbledrating Utrecht because that would bring in Scotland and I don't want to fight the Scots right now because I wouldn't be able to take any land from Utrecht anyway since I have super high aggressive expansion. So I'm only using this war to take the province from East Frisia. Are they actually just hiding in uh, Gelre's province? Isn't it pretty obvious that I'm going to chase them down here? This is what you get, man. If you don't know where to hide, you get stuck in Vapenicum. We crushed their fleets also, so let's assign our boys back to protecting trade. I was gonna cancel the alliance that Utrecht has with Scotland, but then I just realized, why would I do that when I can just take Scottish lands in the next war and use the Scottish lands to get my foothold in the British Isles and then eventually take all of the British Isles for myself? British Isles plus Netherlands is literally the greatest lands for playing tall in the game. Kind of feel like I'm a little bit greedy right now. Whoa, England, thank you so much for paying off my debt, bro. You're my favorite ally right now. Am I able to call you in the war? I am. I'm not going to call you in the war, though. Let's peace out these boys first. Just going to go for the trade power war rations. Not canceling that, but I am going to cancel some rivals for the extra prestige. I'm going to fully annex the nation of East Phrygia. The reason I'm not vassalizing and I'm fully annexing is because it's really not much of a coalition in the first place. And second off, this province that they have here has 16 trade power. And this is 16 trade power in the English Channel node, my node. So that 16 trade power is going to come in handy so that I get more money from trade overall. So yeah, let's go with this Annexatio, a noise. We also can adopt the new institution, Renaissance. Let's also corrupt these lands now. Holy mother of God, Liege just turned into an absolute beast. They basically got most of the lands that the uh, Burgundians had. Oh, Burgundy lost so many nations in the north. These are juicy lands for me to attack now. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. We're also going to build up a fresh new batch of light ships as well. Let's also accept Frisian as our second here and we can accept Flemish after we uh, get a little bit more development in Flemish provinces. So we developed the province of Antwerpen which is a glass province and because of that we managed to get faceting in Antwerpen. By bringing it up to 20 development we also have accepted Flemish as our third accepted culture here. Well second accepted culture aside from the primary culture of course. And that means that whatever provinces we get in the Netherlands now, they are considered the same like our primary culture with no negative malices to it. And because of that, we have nine ducats on the plus in 1462 and we just started snowballing, boys. We literally just started snowballing. We got 29% crown loan so we can sell some of our titles and then we can seize. That means we got 400 ducats so we can invest these 400 ducats in building marketplaces which in return means we're gonna get a bigger chunk of the English Channel here. So right now we got 42% of the English Channel. We can get this up to 55 easily in the next couple of years. In fact, by getting ship trade power plus 33, it is going to improve this considerably as well. And we also can do the global domination mission that offers even more trade efficiency now. What was I saying about the snowball effect? Look at this, 12 ducats in just a few months. And it's only going to continue to go up, everyone. We're basically role-playing the Iron Bank from the Game of Thrones. One more thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna kill off my starting leader because he's still not dead and I want to get my heir on the throne He's considerably better now. We're actually getting proper amounts of mana points Let's go ahead and uh, stab up a little bit again. Oh my god. Look at burgundy guys They have three provinces left and I'm fairly certain that uh, so <gasps> oh you bastards you bastards Oh, man, I really didn't want to be in another one of your wars. Ah Sure, I'll join in your war in case you guys don't know if you want you you can prevent yourself from joining AI wars by clicking this button here but i'm not doing that because if you click that you don't get the favors and i do want the favors
maneuvers with Austria. Look back to our issue at hand. Essentially, I think that Burgundy is going to get fully annexed. If they don't get fully annexed, they get a ton of cores. And I might just be interested in Diplo vassalizing them if that's the case. Our truce with Brabant is over, but we cannot declare because we are in a war with the Emperor here. So until Austria pieces out in this war, I cannot attack Brabant, which right now is not even getting joined by High No. So it's literally the best scenario ever, man. I, oh, I hate the Austrians right now. Oh, oh, I can piece them out. I can do a white piece. I lose 25 prestige because I'm piecing out, but it's fine. Let's go ahead with our war here. Eight days. Go, 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 go. Last of the Brabant provinces are going to be ours in a few moments. So I'm curious if it's uh, going to be too much aggressive expansion. Let's see. It's actually going to be decent amounts of ex aggressive expansion. This is really, really amazing considering that this province actually has 18 development, which is a massive amount. Look at this boy over here. It's super acceptable, man. All right, let's go kill off the rebels. We got quite a little bit of money, so let's invest this money in barracks now, and we can get our first idea set. I highly recommend if you want to play Toll that you go for quantity economic ideas with trade being your third idea. We're also going quantity first because we do have a surplus of military points and we're ahead of tech with our military tech whilst being behind in tech with Diplo and Admin. So it doesn't make logical sense to go for an admin idea like economic or for trade right now because we wouldn't be able to invest the points in that idea anyway. We can invest military points in quantity, however, whilst we wait for admin and diplotech to catch up. Wow, I've never seen Burgundy getting completely annexed rather than going through the Burgundian inheritance before, but it happened, and that means that Flanders is independent. They got an alliance with Trier. That's a really, really easy war for me right there. I don't really have the aggressive expand. I, I, I mean, I have too much aggressive expansion, so I wouldn't be able to take anything from hers. So declaring on them right now would not help out too much. But I'm still gonna do it, and I'm only gonna do it because I can take their trade whilst I wait for my aggressive expansion to go down. Arrivederci, Flanderski. It might not seem like it, but by taking the trade power from Flanders, we get so much more money. And I'm also gonna pillage their capital, which in return means that they're gonna lose six development, and I gain three development in my capital. The real reason why I'm doing this is because six development less for Flanders means it's less aggressive expansion when I vassalize them in the next war. We're about to finish integrating the nation of Oldenburg, and I do not want the minus three Diplo reputation hit, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give out the nobility integration policy, which essentially means that I'm not going to get the minus three Diplo rep hit, and it disappears also after I integrate my vassal, so I don't need to cancel this privilege. There you go, it went away by itself. Massive brain move. Remember to do this and whenever you annex your next vassals. Also remember when you annex vassals or personal union members, after you've annexed them, they start with 60 autonomy in those provinces. So you have to lower the autonomy because the province is going to have 60 autonomy that belong to your previous subject. And that's a massive amount of autonomy. It's also pretty important that you build a flagship as the Dutch and that you get the trade power per ship and fleet movement speed as well. And you can also go for the uh, fleet engagement with, which means you're going to get more ships in combat whenever you're fighting your enemies. You guys want to see something extremely cool? We built barracks in every single one of our provinces, so that means we cannot build them anywhere else. And that means we got 43,000 manpower from just a few provinces. Plus, look at this. Workshop being built in Antwerp and gives us 0.63 ducats from one province alone and another huge amount of ducats from all the other provinces. And this only scales up the more development you put in those provinces. So by increasing the production development in Antwerp, we gain a massive amount of income. This scales up so much more once we do the expand infrastructure in Antwerp. So now with expand infrastructure and with the diamond district modifier that we got from faceting here, we're getting insanely high amounts of money from this one province alone. We also can sell titles once more and still do not have any debuff because we are above 20% and we can use all the money to finish off building all the workshops in our country. So we've built already the most important buildings that we can build in uh, the Netherlands, workshops and barracks everywhere. We can also do the mission build buildings now, which offers a flat tax income. And remember to always set the protect trade edict in all of your provinces whenever you're not increasing your development, whenever you want to develop the provinces, switch over to encourage development. But if you're not doing that, then have it on protect trade, which is going to help you get up to 
90% of the English Channel. And we're getting this with just 9 provinces, whilst there's about 40 other provinces that we do not have, and still we have the majority of the trade here, guys. Time for the war against Utrecht, and apparently the English would help us out in against the uh, Scots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the diplomatic feedback, and apparently England does not care about these 3 provinces. So I'm gonna go to my diplomatic feedback and check these provinces as vital interest, which means if the English get control of these, they're gonna transfer that control to me, and then I can take those provinces for myself. Now, let's go ahead and declare the war, and let's attack Utrecht. And as I was saying before, the English have actually given us the provinces that we set as vital interest, so that means we can even take these for ourselves if we want to. I don't really want to right now. I'll figure out what I'm gonna do with the Scots in the next war against them. Until then, I'm gonna get the humiliation because I really need to bring up my PP war reparations I mean, I don't care about the money that much anyway because I'm rich as schnitzel I literally have nothing else I can build I'm just saving up money for when I ever get manufacturers because I've built all the workshops I've built all the marketplaces. I've built all the barracks now I am going to vassalize them not many people in the coalition realistically speaking I'm also gonna cancel their rival so I get some more prestige and that is pretty much it now We can just uh, increase our relations with them I'm also going to be building a fort in the province of Overstich, which belongs to my vassal for the time being. It will be eventually mine once I integrate them. I'm doing this because this is a forest, or better yet, a woods, and it protects everything else that I have in the northern part of my country. We had a short little session of extra development, which uh, basically meant that we now have every province up to 20 or 25 development around the entirety of the country, and because of that we managed to increase our crown land significantly, so we can sell titles again and get a a ton of money with this money we're gonna upgrade the center of trade in Amsterdam to level 3 so that means we're gonna have to dev this up a little bit more to 25 development and now we have our very first world port next to be upgraded is gonna be the Dutch polders that offers globally goods produced plus 10% so that means an increase of 10% in our economy both from a production and a trade perspective and once more because we are filthy rich we're making a world port out of the center of trade in and weapon as well also if you guys want to go colonial as the Dutch there's a couple of ways via the North Atlantic way you go Scotland first then you take some provinces from the Norwegians in Iceland and then make your way to the North American continent this is gonna work once you have Diplo 7 which I already have right now but I'm not interested in going in the new world or via the south essentially I personally think if you want to go colonial as the Dutch you should do it as your fourth idea set once you already are pretty strong in the Europe you can directly start colonizing in the new world without having to take any provinces in the south of Spain or in Africa. There's also a few achievements you can get as the Dutch nations. One of them is the Sinapple here, which you gotta own a core in South China. If you guys want to see me do this achievement, just let me know in the comment section. Let's say if we get 10,000 likes, we'll do second part for this for sure, and we'll also get that achievement in the process. And until the next time, check out this awesome Polish video right over here. And I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters, I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support.